Hey up guys, so now that we've had the Golden Globe nominations, AFI's top 10 films of the year list, as well as other critics group nominations, and we've been given the shortlist for 10 of the Oscar categories, it's time for me to give you my December predictions for next year's Oscars. So think of it as an early Christmas gift. If you'd like to give me a little Christmas gift, please do help support my channel by hitting that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comment section down below some of your Oscar predictions. And also if you haven't done so already, do click subscribe. I would love to get to 4,000 subscribers for the end of the year. After all, tis the season to be generous and it doesn't cost you guys anything. Thank you very much for all your support. It really means the world to me. The great thing about this video is that I've pretty much seen everything that I've needed to see for next year's Oscars. So I've finally seen The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Cyrano, Tick Tick Boom, Don't Look Up, West Side Story, Nightmare Alley, Licorice Pizza. So yeah, I feel like I'm up to date. And now that we've got the shortlist for all the shorts, I'm gonna start prioritizing watching those. All right, enough chit chat, let's get to it. A quick rundown for all you newbies. I'm going to be going through all 24 of the Oscar categories are gonna come up like so. The ones at the top in white, the five, those are the ones I'm currently predicting will be nominated, and the one that's in bold at the top, the number one position, that is the film that I think is going to win currently, can always change. And then everything that's in yellow below, those are alternates, okay? Makes sense? Shall we get cracking? Let's go. So kicking things off with one of my favorite categories is Best Actress, and as you can see, I still have Kristen Stewart as my number one pick for this category. However, I don't think she's done herself a lot of favors with that interview that she had where she said she couldn't give a shit about the Oscars, so yeah, that's probably damaged her chances a little bit. Jennifer Hudson, I've taken out. I think she's done. Respect just came and went. I don't even have her in my alternates anymore. Frances McDormand's another one that I've taken off my predicted five. I thought she would be a shoe in after I saw the tragedy of Macbeth, but she's just not getting the same sort of buzz as her co-star Denzel Washington is, so I've currently taken her off because she didn't get the Golden Globe nomination. But we'll see if she places at SAG, or maybe she'll have a chance of getting in, but the Oscars do love her, but they might be in a mindset where like, she's won twice recently, she doesn't really need the nomination, so I've taken her out and I've put Olivia Colman back in with Nicole Kidman. And I've also put Lady Gaga in for House of Gucci. What's interesting about my current five picks for Best Actress is, apart from maybe um, Kristen Stewart for Spencer, is that these are all for performances in films which I don't think will be nominated for Best Picture. And even Spencer, I don't think will get a Best Picture nomination. It has a chance, but it's dropped down in my rankings for Best Picture. I put Lady Gaga in at my fifth spot because she did win Best Actress at the New York Film Critics Circle. However, the last three winners of Best Actress at the NYFCC um, Sydney Flanagan for Never Really, Sometimes Always, Regina Hall for Support the Girls, and Lupita Nyong'o for Us, all failed to secure a nomination at the Oscars. So even though I do have it at my fifth spot, I don't think she is a guarantee. I can see an outcome where the five nominees for Golden Globe Drama Best Actress are the five that we get for uh, the Oscars. As for alternates, I've currently got Alana Haim and Rachel Zegler on standby because they're both in films which I think are gonna be Best Picture contenders. They're gonna be seen by more members of the Academy. I do think Rachel Zegler has a better chance than Alana Haim because she did win Best Actress at the National Board of Review, but also, uh, Sean Heater's Coda has done very well, made the AFI top 10 movies of the year, as well as did very well at the Golden Globes, got a nomination for Best Picture in the drama category. So I think Coda is a real player now, and there is a chance that Amelia Jones could get nominated for Best Actress, but I think it is very slim. Also, um, Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers, she is campaigning, so we cannot rule her out, and she did win Best Actress at Venice. At the moment, Best Actress is shaping up to be a category consisting of women who have previously been nominated or won, but I would like to see some new names show up there, like Rachel Zegler, or Renata Reinsphere for The Worst Person in the World, or even Taylor Page for Zola, but I think that is pretty much out of the question now. Also, Amelia Jones is British, so I'm a little bit biased for her, and I really love Coda, so I would like to see her get in. I guess I'll just have to settle for Olivia Colman. It's funny with Olivia Colman because last year she was up for Best Supporting Actress against Glenn Close, who she beat infamously for Best Actress with The Favourite, and now she's up against Lady Gaga again, potentially, in Best Actress this year. So yeah, she keeps, she keeps being thrown in with the same nominees each time she gets nominated. Um, Lady Gaga! <laughs> but the Academy really does love Olivia Colman, and who could blame them? Okay, so next up we have Best Actor, and honestly not a whole lot has changed from my previous predictions video. This is the main one of the four acting categories where I feel the race is really starting to take shape, like it really is solidifying who we're gonna get in this category. 
Uh, so yeah, it's, I think the top four are still pretty much guaranteed to get in. And it's the fifth slot where it's more up for grabs. I'm pretty confident that it's gonna be Will Smith, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield, and Denzel Washington. I bumped Andrew Garfield up a notch because he just blew me away in Tick Tick Boom. God, if Andrew Garfield doesn't get nominated, I will have a hissy fit. There's no reason he shouldn't, but part of me is concerned, what if he ends up being the Taron Egerton of this year's bunch of Best Actor nominees? And yes, Taron Egerton was robbed. At the moment, I see it as a two-way race between Will Smith and Benedict Cumberbatch. I know Cumberbatch won Best Actor at the NYFCC, which is a pretty reliable indicator, but Will Smith did win Best Actor for the National Board of Review, and I also think Will Smith has a better narrative than uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. It's not a done deal, we've got a long way to go yet, and to be honest, I'd be happy with either of them winning, or Andrew Garfield, but for now my gut still tells me it's Will Smith. I can see Will Smith getting SAG and Cumberbatch getting BAFTA, but right now my gut tells me that Smith is getting the Oscar. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. But it's nice that it's not a done deal. We have an actual race in the Best Actor category. I've bumped Peter Dinklage for Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't want to. I don't think DiCaprio really needs the nomination. And it would be nice to see at least one nominee in this category who's getting their first nomination rather than the second or third or what have you. Kind of like Best Actress. It is nice to see some new faces, but we're probably only going to get Kristen Stewart. I loved Peter Dinklage in Cyrano, but the problem is Cyrano isn't in the running for Best Picture and Don't Look Up is, which gives DiCaprio an advantage because more people will see Don't Look Up. He gets one brilliant speech, which is very Oscar cliffy. It's very All the President's Men. And even like the stuff in the beginning of the film where he's doing all that heavy breathing. You know, he's really acting the crap out of this role. Could someone else surprise here? Maybe Bradley Cooper for Night Morale. The Academy really does love uh, Bradley Cooper. He's been nominated eight times, no wins yet. He has a lot of good faith with them, but Night Morale hasn't had the warmest reception, so I don't feel certain he is going to make it in, but he does have a chance. Also, Javier Bardem, he's good in being the Ricardos, but is the Nicole Kidman show as Lucille Ball, so I'm just not sure it's enough to get him into the top five. It's a maybe, but not sure. Who should be here though is Simon Rex for Red Rocket. If I had it my way, he would be sweeping all the awards this year, but the Academy has little to no appreciation for comedic performances. And if you ask me, Simon Rex gave the performance of the year, but yeah. He, I, he didn't even get the Golden Globe nomination, so I've taken him off my alternates. He should be on there, but he's not gonna get in. Best Supporting Actress. I would have thought by now I'd be more confident on this category, but nope. This race is still pretty open. I bumped Anjanou Ellis up for King Richard. She got a nice boost from the win at National Board of Review. Although I'm sad to say it breaks my heart that Every passing day, I get a little less confident that Anne Dowd is gonna make it into this category. She who's, is who I want to see win this category, but Mass just isn't getting the traction it needs in order for there to be nominations for the actors. It absolutely sucks. Anne Dowd broke my heart in Mass, and it's just so sad that that performance isn't going to get an Oscar nomination bit of recognition. But now that Coda has made the top 10 movies of the year for the National Board of Review and AFI, as well as a Best Picture nomination in the drama category at the Golden Globes, I'm feeling more confident now that Marley Matson might actually show up for a Best Supporting Actress uh, nomination at the Oscars. I feel more confident about Marley Matson getting in than and Dowd, but I wish they both could be nominated. It would be such a delightful surprise if they both made it in, but I'm not expecting it to happen. I've added Catherine Hunter from The Tragedy of Macbeth to my alternates because she did win Best Supporting Actress at the NYFCC. That was a nice little surprise. I don't think she will get the Oscar nomination, but I thought she was worth putting on my alternates. Ariana DeBose, if that's how you say it correctly, I think I said DeBose last time, she danced and sang her way into my heart and into my predictions for Best Actress. She was just magnificent in West Side Story. Impossible to forget. I think she will make it in. I wouldn't put it past Kate Blanchett or Meryl Streep to show up in this category. They're both so beloved by the Academy. They both feature in Don't Look Up, but um, Kate Blanchett's performance in Nightmare Alley is just so more alluring, memorable, and distinctive, as opposed to what she brings in Don't Look Up, and Meryl Streep is a bit of a scene stealer in Don't Look Up. So yeah, they might show up in this category, one of them, probably not both. But this could be a year where everyone in Best Supporting Actress is a first time nominee. Uh, my current five, apart from Marley Matson, who of course won Best Actress for Children of a Lesser God back in 1987, 
Everyone else is a first time nominee. And the reason I have Marley Matson at number five is because I could see her being rotated out for someone else. Maybe Anne Dowd, maybe Martha Plimpton, or Judy Dench, or Jesse Buckley. But yeah, let's see who gets nominated in this category, the BAFTAs and SAGs. That will help inform my opinion in my next prediction video. Best Supporting Actor. Honestly, this is the hardest of the four acting categories for me to call at the moment. Nobody feels like a lock. Uh, there are some people who feel more certain than others, like Kieran Hines and Cody Smith McPhee. But again, nobody feels like a dead cert. My predictions look vastly different from the last predictions video, and that's because Best Supporting Actor is so up in the air. This time around, I put in Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog, begrudgingly Jared Leto for The House of Gucci, and also Ben Affleck for The Tender Bar. Did you know that Ben Affleck has never been nominated for an acting award at the Oscars? I mean, he's won for Best Screenplay for Wood Will Hunting and producing Argo, but he's never been nominated for acting. Couldn't believe that when I discovered that. Sadly, my previous number one pick, Jason Isaacs for Mass, has dropped out of this category just because Mass isn't getting the love that it deserves, so I'm finding it less and less likely he will be nominated. I've also dropped Timothy Spall for Spencer. If I was a member of the Academy, I would nominate Spall. He is so good in Spencer, and he's never been nominated for an Oscar. He's way overdue. But it seems nobody else agrees with me on how good he was in Spencer. I've got like five or six alternates in this category who all feel very plausible. Bradley Cooper was an absolute scene stealer in Licorice Pizza, but now that I've seen Licorice Pizza, I'm honestly not sure it's enough for him to be guaranteed a nomination. While he is very memorable, he doesn't have a whole lot of screen time and what his character brings to the plot is actually quite inconsequential. So yeah, I'm not sure about Bradley Cooper, but if it's between him, Jason Isaacs, and Timothy Spall, he's the one I think would be the most likely to show up out of those three. Jamie Dornan's another one I could see showing up here, but it really is Kieran Hines' character in Belfast, who I feel like is the true definitive supporting role. He's more memorable in my opinion. I know a lot of people love Jamie Dornan and his everlasting love routine, but yeah, Kieran Hines really was the heart of that film, and he's also been placing a lot more in other awards bodies and critics groups, so Jamie Dornan is a maybe, but I'm not sure about. I thankfully feel more confident now about my prediction of Troy Kotzer getting in for Coda. I absolutely adored him in Coda. He is the heart of that movie, and I would really love to see him get a Best Supporting Actor nomination. If anything, he's probably the person I would want to see win. I was kind of on the fence about him in my last prediction video, but now I feel more confident he will get in. Because of all that Coda love, Cody Smith McPhee has firmly joined my predictive five for his performance in The Power of the Dog. Now that he's won Best Supporting Actor at so many critic circles for the NYFCC, Los Angeles, Utah, Philadelphia, and Washington, He's definitely in my five, but I'm not saying he's a lock. Let's talk about Jared Leto. Now, I don't want him to be nominated for his scenery-chewing, loud, attention-seeking, borderline offensive Mario impression, but I can see the Academy nominating for him for this performance because Best Supporting Actor is such an underwhelming category this year. Whether for good reasons or for bad, Jared Leto is memorable in the House of Gucci and people will be thinking about him when they come to place their votes. And also the Academy does tend to honor more scenery chewing comedic performances in the supporting acting categories than they do the leading ones. And also Jared Leto almost got an Oscar nomination last year for another hammy performance in The Little Things, he even got a SAG nomination for that film. So he can get in for House of Gucci. I don't want him to, but it's very likely that he could show up here. I would be happier with literally anybody else on my alternates to get in over Jared Leto. I currently have Ben Affleck as my fifth spot for his performance in The Tender Bar because he got a nomination for this performance at the Golden Globes, and he is so good in The Tender Bar. Probably the best thing about it. If The Tender Bar is gonna get one nomination, it would be for Ben Affleck. But the Academy might feel like a newcomer should be honored, like Mike Faced in West Side Story, which would be what I would want to see. But yeah, let's see if he plays as either the Sags or the BAFTAs. Who should be here in this category? Risa Fons for The King's Man. I know it sounds absurd of me to say that, but he really does deliver one of the best most memorable and entertaining performances of the year. I thought he was fab, but yeah, 
He's not getting in here. Not even on my alternates. You never know, we could see a surprise in this category like last year with uh, Lakeith Stanfield showing up in the best supporting actor category when he was a lead, along with his co-star Daniel Kaluuya. So maybe we'll see Corey Hawkins, Richard Jenkins, Jesse Plemons, Woody Norman, or Jeffrey Wright. And again, this could be another category where everyone in this category is a first time nominee. Can't wait to see how this one unfolds. Out of all the acting categories, this is the one I'm most curious about. Best Original Screenplay. I've dropped Pedro Almodovar for Adam McKay's Don't Look Up. Not because I want to, but because he's Adam McKay. The Academy tends to like Adam McKay's screenplays and Pedro Almodovar hasn't been nominated for a screenplay since 2003 with Talk To Her, which he did win. I still currently have Stephen Knight in here for Spencer. And I know Spencer hasn't performed all that great, but for some reason, I still feel like Spencer's a film the Academy will like. I mean, they are gonna be watching it for Kristen Stewart's performance, so I feel like they're bound to notice the other good qualities about it, like the cinematography. And even though the script does have some on-the-nose dialogue, the script is pretty well written by Stephen Knight. So I think it could show up in Best Original Screenplay. It's funny, in this category, we have two overdue jack-of-all-trades vying for their first ever Oscar, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast and Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, who both are also contenders for Best Director as well. Paul Thomas Anderson has had eight nominations and no wins, and Kenneth Branagh has had five nominations and no wins. And I can see either one of them winning in this category. Currently, I think it is Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, just because that film is a little bit more accessible and it comes from a more emotional, personal place of Kenneth Branagh. However, Paul Thomas Anderson did win Best Screenplay at the NYFCC, and he also won Best Director and Best Film at the National Board of Review. So we need to see which way the wind is blowing when the other precursor awards are announced. The main one being the Writers Guild. Best Adapted Screenplay. Nightmare Alley is a beautifully written script, however, the reception to it has been a little cold. I actually said in my previous predictions vid, Nightmare Alley is a film which I cannot not see getting into best screenplay, unless the film itself doesn't do all that well, and lo and behold, it's not done all that well. Also, I feel pretty good about my top three. Coda is getting lots of love. Dune and Power of the Dog also seem very likely. I've got Power of the Dog at the top. I currently have Joel Cohen in for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Normally Shakespeare adaptations don't get nominations in the screenplay category. I mean, how do you adapt Shakespeare and make it your own? You can't really, but it did win Best Screenplay at the National Board of Review, so I think that gives it a slight edge over, say, Nightmare Alley. I can also see Maggie Gyllenhaal getting in for The Lost Daughter. This is her writing and directorial feature debut, and it's made quite a bit of noise. I think they are going to want to acknowledge her somewhere, and her screenplay nomination seems most likely. Costume design, not many changes here, although I have swapped out Louis Sequera for Nightmare Alley with Paul Tazewell from West Side Story. I'm anticipating West Side Story to be heavily nominated in the technical category. Also, somebody asked me, could Dune win Best Costume Design? And if you'd asked me this a decade ago, I would have said, nah, it's highly unlikely. But in the past decade, we have seen big, popular blockbuster movies with otherworldly elements win with like Mad Max Fury Road and Black Panther. So it's not out of the question. Production design, I'm sticking with the same. However, I've swapped Adam Stockhausen for The French Dispatch with Adam Stockhausen for West Side Story. Could he get nominated for both though? It's not impossible, but I do think West Side Story is gonna be more of a player than The French Dispatch. And just from the first scene alone of the West Side Story, when you see the exterior, like New York streets, it's insane how good the production design in that film is. I'm still keeping Tamara Deverell as my number one for Nightmare Alley for now. If Nightmare Alley is gonna win for anything, it will be for production design. I might swap Spencer out for The Power of the Dog or Being the Ricardos, but I'll see how I feel in the new year. Now for one of my favorite categories this year, Best Cinematography, because we are absolutely spoilt for choice this year. Cinematography has a pretty good amount of overlap with Best Picture nominees, so it's good to go for films that you think are gonna be on for Best Picture. Picture, so I'm sticking with the five that I had for last month. Whilst I'd love to see some love for Linus Sandgren for No Time to Die or Ruben Impens for Titan, those are kind of my fantasy picks. Also, one of my other favorite looking films of the year was Licorice Pizza. However, it just doesn't have as grand a face slapping cinematography as say, Dune, or The Power of the Dog, or Spencer. I think it's a masterful example of subtle but gorgeous cinematography, 
But yeah, I still think Bruno Delbanel is going to be winning for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Best editing. Again, like cinematography, editing is another category which has a good relationship with best pictures. So it's smart to go for films that you think are going to be best picture contenders. I personally don't think Belfast is the best example of editing this year, but I have bumped it up to number one because it does have a credible chance of winning best picture, at least more so than Dune, which I believe should win. But there's a big difference between who should win and who I think will win. I've taken Nightmare Alley and Don't Look Up Out and replaced them with West Side Story and King Richard. Again, for the same reasons, they just seem like more likely Best Picture contenders, and they also feature some dazzling editing sequences in them. West Side Story's standout editing sequence would have to be for the Tonight Quintet number, when all the narrative strands overlap in the big song right before where the intermission would be. That was very well done. And for King Richard, all the sequences which take place on the tennis courts are some of the most gripping and exciting sequences I've ever seen in a sports film. Best makeup and hairstyling, I've brought Nightmare Alley and Cruella into my five. My top three, I've still kept the same. I currently have The Eyes of Tammy Faye at number one, but honestly, I could see Eva Dune or House of Gucci taking this home. They all feature prosthetics, which are used on actors to transform them into their roles, and they're all really good. I'm not sure which one has the edge at the moment. Also, where is Titan on the shortlist for this category? Best visual effects, no change here, other than I have changed Spider-Man Far From Home to Spider-Man No Way Home. Thank you to all those who corrected me in the comment section on my previous Oscar predictions video. But again, everybody is just playing for the four remaining slots because it is Dunes to lose. Just the motion blur of those dragonfly shoppers is astounding. It's Dune. If you want a safe, guaranteed bet for this year's Oscars, then put your money on Dune to win visual effects because it's taking it home. Best sound. Again, not much has changed here. Dune is still my number one pick, but I have taken Belfast out and replaced it with Tick Tick Boom because musicals do tend to do a little bit better in this category, so I've given the edge to Tick Tick Boom. Best original score. I'm sticking with the five I had last time. Now that I've seen Licorice Pizza, I'm confident that Johnny Greenwood is gonna get two nominations, one for Spencer and one for Power of the Dog. Don't think he's gonna get in for Licorice Pizza. I think Nicholas Patel does have a good chance for Don't Look Up. His music really did strike a chord with me, particularly in the scenes where the spaceships were taken off. That was very majestic and memorable. Nathan Johnson's score for Nightmare Alley didn't even make the shortlist, so that's out. I think Alexander Desplat might have a chance of getting in with the French Dispatch. But again, like visual effects and sound, I think this is gonna go to Dune again. Hans Zimmer's score for Dune is just iconic, and he hasn't won an Oscar since 1995. That was for The Lion King, so he's a bit overdue now, and yeah, this he deserves it for Dune. Best original song. This is another one of my favorite categories this year. This really could be the year that pop stars dominate this category. Imagine Oscars where we get performances from Billie Eilish, Ariana Grande and Kid Cudi, Van Morrison, the Mayo Brothers, aka the Sparks Brothers, and of course, the power couple that is Beyonce and Jay-Z. This could be the first time ever we see a married couple competing separately for best song. Jay-Z for Guns Go Bang in the Holiday Fall and for Beyonce, Be Alive from King Richard. Now that I've seen Don't Look Up, I do think that Ariana Grande and Kid Cudi have a decent chance of winning this category because what separates them from the pack is that their song is an actual moment in their movie, whereas like Beyonce's Be Alive, while it's a good song, it's just an end credit song. It's not uh, like a pivotal moment in the movie, like Just Look Up is. And it's very memorable, Just Look Up. So I can see Ariana Grande potentially winning this. My guess is they're gonna open next year's Oscars ceremony with So May We Start by the Mayo Brothers and have a load of people join in like they did in the opening scene of Annette. As for the song winning, I'm not sure. I don't think enough people will have seen Annette. I think a lot of people find it a bit too weird and obtuse, so. I don't really think it's gonna win, but I think it will be nominated. I can see Billie Eilish squeezing in for her Bond song, No Time To Die, because the Bond songs from the Daniel Craig era have fared well at the Academy Awards, but I don't think she's a guarantee. My concern is that the song has been out for so long that it might have passed its expiration date. Right, time for some new categories, the shorts. Now that we've got the shortlists for the shorts, it's time to start theorizing. Just gonna admit this up front, guys, I have barely seen any of the shorts in live action, animated, or documentary, but this is the time of the year where I start to seek them out. But once I've seen more of the shorts, I will be able to give you more analysis in the subsequent prediction bits. First up is best animated short, and I have Robin Robin as my number one because it is the only one that I've seen, and I loved it. It's by Ardman, who gave us Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. 
So yeah, that's currently my number one because I don't have anything else to compare it to. I've also got Us again in my five because it's Disney. As for the others, I'd heard of Namu and I watched the trailer online and it looked gorgeous. That was good enough for me. And the other two are honestly just guesses. I will probably change this in a month's time. Best documentary short, I honestly don't think I've seen a single one, so I can't really give you any analysis on this category. This is essentially a pick and mix based on the subject matter of the short from whatever I found on the internet. I know I'm excited to watch some of these now, but I genuinely don't know who's getting in. Your guess is as good as mine. Best live action short, again, I haven't seen any of these. This is just a guessing game based off information I could find on the internet, and that's what I've gone with for now. It will change as and when I see more of them. Best animated film, same predictions, just a different order. Encanto won at the National Board of Review, The Mitchells vs. The Machines won at the NYFCC, but also Flea won Best Nonfiction Film at the NYFCC, but I think the Academy has other plans for Flea, and I'll get to that in a minute. I want the Mitchells to win, but I currently have Encanto, because Disney has an impeccable track record when it comes to winning Best Animated Feature. Plus, the biggest snub of the Golden Globes was perhaps the Mitchells vs. the Machines being absent from Best Animated Feature. What the hell? I still think the Mitchells could win at the Oscars. They do have a very passionate fan base, similar to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse when that won, so it could be the one to beat Disney. But until we have more information, I am sticking with Encanto. Best Documentary Feature. Here is where I think Flea will triumph in Best Documentary, not Best Animated Feature. I previously had The Rescue, but I think more and more people are falling in love with Flea and they're going to want to honor it, so I think it makes sense for it to be a credible frontrunner for Best Documentary. I've also bumped We Are One for Summer of Love. Best International Feature. Some changes here. First of all, big shocker, Francis Titan did not make the shortlist for this category, so that means that's out, and I'm kind of flabbergasted by that. Also, now that Drive My Car won Best Film at the NYFCC, I've had to put it in my five predictions. I don't personally understand the hype for this film, but I can't really ignore it. I've also bumped compartment number six for a hero. I still think the worst person in the world is winning it. I think it's the most accessible of all the films on the shortlist. It's currently my number one, and it's also my personal pick. Best director, I have made some amendments. After seeing Nightmare Alley, and as much as I love Guillermo del Toro's direction in it, I don't think Nightmare Alley is a best picture contender. There. And I have to say the same thing begrudgingly about Pablo Lorraine's Spencer. I love Lorraine's direction, I would nominate him, but Spencer doesn't have the steam, buzz, or momentum for Best Picture. And they're two categories which kind of go hand in hand, Best Picture and Best Director. So I've bumped Guillermo del Toro and Pablo Lorraine for Steven Spielberg for West Side Story, and Sean Hida for Coda. I know it seems like a long shot, but with all this late surge of love for Coda, I think it could happen. And also, wouldn't it be nice to have two back-to-back -back years of multiple female nominees in the Best Director category? Like, prove it wasn't a fluke? I also think that Steven Spielberg is a legitimate contender for the win. He's never done a musical before, but he absolutely smashed it with West Side Story. It's big, sweeping, cinematic storytelling, and somehow Spielberg has managed to make a film which looks like it could have been made in the 1950s. It just proves that Steven Spielberg really is the best of the best, the creme de la creme, because he can take a genre that he's not really had much experience in and smash it out of the park on his first ever go. Plus he hasn't won since Saving Private Ryan back in 1999. I do think he has a decent chance. At the moment, I honestly don't know who is going to win it. I can make an argument for any of the top four. Jane Campion could definitely win it. It takes someone with a lot of skill to pull off such a dark cocktail of genres in The Power of the Dog, but she did it so well. Plus, it would be nice to see back-to-back -back female winners in the directing category. A lot of people think Belfast is gonna win Best Picture, and that automatically makes Kenneth Branagh a contender, so yes, he could win. Denis Villeneuve is whom I want to see win, and given how Dune might actually sweep in a lot of the technical categories, it's not out of the question. And Julia DeCorno is my fantasy pick, someone I want to see nominated, but I don't think will. I have even less faith in the idea that she'll get nominated now because Titan didn't even make it into the Best International Feature category. But that's a good question to ask you guys. Who is your ultimate fantasy pick for next year's Oscars? It can be in any category, but who is someone that you think 
absolutely deserves a nomination, but doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting one. Whatever you have to say, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, last category, best picture. I still have Belfast as my predicted winner, but I don't think it's a done deal. I think currently Belfast's biggest competition is West Side Story, King Richard, and potentially Licorice Pizza, because it did win Best Film at the National Board of Review. But yeah, those are the films that I can see doing well on a preferential ballot. I still think Belfast is the front runner. It doesn't have it in the bag like Nomadland did. The tide could easily change in favor of West Side Story, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, heck, even something like Coda. We just have to see how things play out at the precursors, the Golden Globes, the SAGs, the BAFTAs. I have a feeling that after such a dark couple of years for humanity, voters are going to gravitate towards a more feel-good film for Best Picture next year. Which means Belfast, West Side Story, King Richard and Coda are your most likely candidates. There's still an argument to be made for Licorice Pizza. Critics loved it, but crowds have been a bit lukewarm to it. I love that in my last prediction video, I said that Coda was kind of a fantasy pick and it could easily drop out of the best picture race, but in the space of a month, it's now a legitimate contender, and that just makes me so happy. I have dropped Mass and Nightmare Alley for Tick Tick Boom and Don't Look Up, and I've also swapped out Spencer for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Honestly, it's kind of a toss up between the two of them and I don't know why, but I feel like Joel Cohen might just have a little bit more favor with the Academy and Tragedy Macbeth could get in for it. Uh, but I would like to see Spencer make it in. Heck, maybe neither of them will get in and it'll be something like being the Ricardos. But yeah, with that 10th slot, you've got about three or four movies vying for it. Essentially, apart from Nightmare Alley, I'm going with the 10 films that AFI listed as the top 10 movies of the year, plus Belfast, which got a special mention. The AFI Top 10 Films of the Year does have a good track record of overlapping with the Oscar Best Picture contenders. I wasn't a big fan of Adam McKay's Don't Look Up, but I can see it being nominated here. The Academy like to pat themselves on the back by selecting films which reflect current social and political issues. And with Don't Look Up, there's a wealth of topics that it addresses from climate change to the global issues like the pandemic, the Trump administration, misinformation, the media, modern politics. So yeah, even though I wasn't a huge fan, I can see it being nominated. But there you go. Those are my December predictions for Best Picture. But as always, guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. What did you think of my predictions? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What updated predictions do you guys have for me? Let me know in that comment section down below and also hit that thumbs up button. Just wanna wish all you guys a very Merry Christmas. And if you would like to help support my channel by getting me to my next target of 4,000 subscribers, please do make sure you hit that subscribe button for me. It doesn't cost you guys anything and it really does help me out. Think of it as a Christmas gift from you to me. If you guys want to follow me on social media as well, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, they're all in that video description down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.